Hello, it's Tim Sandal back with you with another video about clean room practices. And this is all about um, surface sampling. And surface sampling is all about having the right tools for the job. So for example, um, no, what I meant to use was the common swab. Now a swab might look simple. You might think it's a piece of cotton or in this case nylon on the end of an applicator stick but actually the swab is quite an important device in the microbiologist tool. So the first thing is is that there's two different types of swab tip in the way they're made and quite a range of different materials. So first of all there are plain swabs that tend to be used more in the medical world and then there are the flocked tipped swabs. So if I try and get a bit closer you may just be able to make out that this is not a smooth swab but it's actually made of orientated strands of nylon that are arranged perpendicular to the shaft and this creates micro capillaries which enhance the recovery from the swab. The second thing is is that swabs can either be taken dry again as they tend to in the medical world because if you're sampling a moist wound for example you don't want to be adding something to it and also swabs tend to be taken moistened in uh, say for pharmaceuticals and for surfing, sampling food surfaces for example um, and this improves the recovery and also um, provides a degree of preservation so for example with the ICR swab which is often used in grade A conditions then this uses a salt solution which um, helps to retain the microbial recovery and often swab solutions will also contain um, neutralizers as well which will address disinfectant residues. Another important point is that swabs need to be refrigerated fairly soon after sampling say within two hours at two to eight degrees and this is to um, preserve the microorganisms and to stop them from growing because what we're interested in is enumerating knowing how many there were. Now this isn't often the case saying that again in the medical world where swabs might have a, a special medium something called Amy's charcoal medium for example which is all about preserving the microorganism and maximizing its recovery so a doctor can work out what species it is. There's different ways to enumerate from a swab as well. So with the um, ICR swab, which is a presence absence swab, then we have uh, we use broth medium and we'll be all about um, looking for growth or no growth. With other swabs, we're interested in what the count is. So we're either um, plate them out onto an agar plate or use the diluent to membrane filter it. Well, and also alternately there are ATP bioluminescence technologies um, which are again used in food industry but don't have the level of quantitation that is suitable for say pharmaceutical industry. It's also important that the swabs are sterile when they're used in clean rooms so there's no risk of additional contamination. The other important thing is that with swabs the recovery is not as good as a contact plate. So contact plates are always um, preferred. The best you can expect from the swab is about 50 to 60% um, and that's with the flock tipped swab. They're also um, quite uh, dependent upon technique of the person sampling and also then the person plating out or processing the swab. So there's a number of variables to consider. Now with swab sampling technique, I happen to have a surface here. Now this is a piece of cardboard from a cat food box, so it is not representative of a clean room and cardboard is never allowed inside a clean room. But what I'm gonna try and illustrate is the importance. So let's say this is my surface area, which I've drawn out with a Sharpie pen. Um, then the important technique with a swab is always to do a gentle rolling action. We need to expose all sides of the swab tip. So the swab needs to roll down the surface being lightly rotated and then you roll up the surface 
being lightly rotated and then down the surface being lightly rotated. And when you've done all of that, then it's going in the across direction, rolling lightly across and again rolling lightly across. Now of course if you're trying to sample something like a filling needle then that requires a different technique because all you have is something um, thin, so like that. So all there you can do is to rotate up and then to rotate down. So just to illustrate that again, I have to have a smaller square here and I so happen to have a Sharpie pen. Of course you can use other brands of pen as well, you don't have to use a Sharpie pen. Um, so just to illustrate that, you know, you're very much doing this activity whilst rotating. And then when that activity has been completed, then you're doing this direction for the representative surface. Because what you're trying to do is to get as many microorganisms as you can and to come up with a surface that's broadly Maybe similar to the size of the contact plate or at least broadly representative so that when we find so many microorganisms we have an idea of what that surface by burden is likely to be. Okay so this was the um, short video uh, from Tim Sandal looking at a microbiological um, topic so um, hopefully that's been some use and it remains for me to say um, good luck with the um, rest of your working day. Cheerio. And I think I need to go and do something else. Goodbye.